Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis wants to keep her job. Challenger Max Rose says, not so fast. The point starts right now. It's the most competitive congressional race in New York City. Two years ago, Republican Nicole Maliotakis beat then one-term Democrat Max Rose to represent Staten Island and parts of Brooklyn in Washington. Now Rose wants to return the favor. They're both here hoping to make their points to voters. So let's get right started. Let's talk about immigration, which is the hottest topic that's going on in, in the city and the nation today. Nicole, do you believe people should have the right to seek asylum in the United States? Well, look, my mother is a Cuban refugee, so of course people have the right to seek asylum, but it has to be done in accordance to our laws. The open border policy that has been put in place by President Joe Biden is just simply not working. We've seen four million people enter into our country that is spilling now into cities across America, and Americans and New Yorkers are now responsible to house and provide basic uh, needs of all those individuals, and it's coming at a couldn't come at a worse time with uh, uh, so many Americans struggling in this economy with record inflation. So what do you think should be done? What should, the, what should the president do? The president should absolutely revoke the policies that he put in place when he got there. He should reinstate the policies that were working uh, in the president, under President Trump that stemmed the flow of the migration. And he should add judges, by the way, to hear these cases quicker so we could differentiate between actual uh, legitimate asylum claims and those who are just trying to cut the line. But we need to restore order at the border. The drug traffic in the fentanyl cr uh, crisis is just, it's, it's gone way too far, and I can't understand why he just won't make this simple fix. Max Rose. First of all, thanks for having me, and Congresswoman, thank you for, for it. Joining this conversation, um, I'm really looking forward to it. Look, there's going to be many points today where uh, the Congresswoman and I agree, and in some aspects, this may be one of them. I strongly believe that we need to increase the number of judges in our asylum courts to massively speed up that process. But all in all, this has to be looked at as a bipartisan failure over the course of four administrations, where we have not had expanded legal immigration as well as stronger borders. Common sense appears not to be common in Washington, D.C. I experienced it. We need a federal solution, and that has to involve Democrats and Republicans coming together here. But right now, it's President Biden's problem, so what should the president so do? I, and first of all, I have absolutely zero issues saying that President Biden has not lived up to the standard in his administration when it comes to this issue. But let's not forget, though, it was not perfect under President Trump either. The critical issue here is speeding up asylum cases, as well as addressing the core roots of why we're seeing this refugee crisis in the first place. There's nothing wrong with seeing regional refugee resettlement, as well as having expanded aid to the countries that are experiencing these corruption problems and violence problems in the first place. This issue should not be the sole burden of states and localities. But just as I'm willing to criticize President Biden, we have to be willing to criticize these Republican governors who are literally kidnapping people, sending them up to, the, to northern cities just as a political stunt so they can be on Fox News. That is wrong as well. You know, so, go ahead. Hold on a second, because it was President Biden that was flying migrants to New York to begin with. And then the El Paso mayor, who's a Democrat, has, has bust twice as many as Governor Abbott. Now, the reality is when you have four million people entering your country illegally, they have to go somewhere. So now every city has become a border city, and we're dealing with that right now. The mayor has declared a state of emergency, but he has not called on the president to secure the borders and reinstate the policies of President Trump, remain in Mexico that was working, and you have not either. But I think that we need more Democrats to join us on these common sense policies that just bring order to the border. What do you think about the border, Quam? So, as I said, we absolutely need strong borders. I think the critical issue here is speeding up asylum cases. Um, because, as you said, you do believe, I believe in your heart of hearts, you believe that asylum has a place in the United States of America. Of course, it means something to you personally. So we should not do away with our asylum cases. We shouldn't turn our backs on people at their neediest moment. But it cannot be unlimited. It cannot be without restraint. And it should not be without additional resources. And right is, now, we're not seeing that. The problem is it's not just... It, it, 
create legitimate asylum cases. We have dozens of people who are on the terrorist watch list who have crossed. We are seeing record levels of fentanyl. 100,000 Americans died last year. The DEA, Drug Enforcement Agency, is telling us that it is coming from our border. It's the responsibility of the, of the Mexican drug cartels. And our president has allowed them to overrun our CBP agents. I went down there personally and saw what was going on. It's shocking to see how the drug cartels are running our southern border. Mr. Rose, I wonder what you think about the idea to put a cruise ship hosting migrants at the home port in Staten Island. Well, so I, I came out and said that I didn't think that that was the right idea because, again, as you go back to this central notion that no individual community should bear an undue burden to this crisis. And in the absence of strong federal resources, as well as in the absence of every community playing their part. Now, as of a few hours ago, my understanding is that's not happening. So, but so no, that's, that's, not, a, that's actually not true. They're actually considering a number of uh, cruise ship companies, not only Norwegian, but they've expanded to include two, uh, two or three others. But the question really is, should it be at the home port? And if not, where should people go? Where should they find, you know, a place to live? So, I, first of all, I do not think that it should be at the home port. And I do not think that it should be just the burden of New York State and New York City to figure out this problem without a significant infusion of federal capital. That's the central problem. I have all the belief in the world, and I've worked in the Pentagon, and I've seen what the federal government is capable of when it puts its mind to something. Now, on the same hand, look, I don't believe in turning my back on people, but there has to be a central strategy and a central diffusion of resources to actually figure this out. And the end, may I add, it requires bipartisan leadership in Congress. That's how we get stuff done. When I, was a, when I was a member of Congress, there was a Republican president. I didn't spend my entire time just criticizing that president. I made every attempt possible, particularly during COVID, to, to try to advance bipartisan solutions to that crisis. And I think we need to see that here. Yeah, well, we've introduced the, the Border Security for America Act. Nancy Pelosi refuses to bring it to the floor for a vote. And the reality is the Democrats have created this crisis and refuse to work with us to fix it. A cruise ship? A cruise, a cruise well, I'm, ship? Obviously, I'm opposed. I was one of the first ones um, condemning it. But the re reality is the right to shelter law does not provide that New York City has to provide shelter to citizens of other countries. We have tens of thousands of homeless ourselves. And right now during the struggling economy, it's certainly this burden that's placing on people trying to keep roofs over their own heads but, is wrong. But do you think that the federal government should change its work policy so that people who come here as, as asylum seekers should get work permits right away so they don't have to wait five or six months before they can start well, working? I think that's why they need to add judges to hear these cases. Right now they're being sent here without being approved so you for Asylum. change the policy? No, I think they need to add the judges to be able to hear these cases. The issue is that they're waiting a year or two to even get their court date because of the influx that is coming in. That's just unsustainable. That's why we have to restore order at the border. We can't have what we're having now, this influx that's just unsustainable and can't be dealt with. Mr. Rose, how about you? Do you think that the work permits should be speeded up so people can start working almost immediately? While their cases are being adjudicated, that makes perfect sense. I would much rather that than under the table work. That naturally depresses labor for people who are trying to do it the legal way. Let's speed up the court cases, let's grow our economy, let's address the root causes of this, and let's do it in a bipartisan manner. I gotta believe that when it comes to issues of national security, that whether it's a Democrat in the White House or a Republican, that we wanna see the country successful. That should be what matters. So let's talk about the economy. Voters in Staten Island and Brooklyn say the economy is a major economic stress in their life. So I'm wondering, um, what can you do in Washington to deal with the question of um, helping them economically? Sure. Should it be a gas tax holiday, repeal salt, another child care tax credits, anything? What's a new so idea? So I think all of those are actually strong. Or do you have any I, other ideas? I think all of those are actually strong ideas. We have to remember that when it comes to the issue of inflation, this is a global problem with global causes, but one that demands a quintessentially American solution. Now, what's ironic here is that many of the solutions that you just laid out, which are tied to short-term as well as long-term affordability, are issues that Congresswoman Maliotakis voted against, making the child tax credit permanent, lowering health care pr drug prices when it comes to Medicare, making sure that there's a gas tax holiday, making sure that big oil is no longer just jacking up the price of oil, price gouging American consumers. These are all things that she voted against, and yeah. I think it's wrong. They're part you're of the solution. Shaking your head. Because your head. the Go problem ahead. is, first of all, we never had a gas tax, tax holiday vote. I did urge our governor to do it, and she did do it. But what I will say is that the solutions that the Democrats put up are not real solutions. They're just 
and things they want us to vote on so they can run ads against us. The reality, if we really want to fix this, is to reverse Joe Biden's policies uh, that have crippled American energy production in this country that is fueling the gas prices going up, the heating costs going up, electricity, which is, look, gas fuels everything, right? You can't transport goods, you can't transport uh, vegetables and produce and, and food. That's what's driving up a majority of the problems that we're facing here today. Again, another self-created disaster. Uh, and Max Rose supports that Build Back Better $5 trillion socialist uh, spending bill that would have just added to the, inf the, the fueling the inflation. So we have to get serious about spending in this country. We need to get back to uh, making sure that we are energy independent not just for our economy to lower the cost for Americans, but to also be have national security. If you look at Europe right now, look how reliant they are on Russia. They are having that weaponized against them and are going to deal with the worst winner ever. We can't allow that to happen here. So instead of begging our adversaries, um, now that, you know OPEC and 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 uh, Venezuela, we should be producing energy here and lowering the burden on families. So let's actually look at this issue though, j just for a second though. When you were an assemblywoman, you voted against fracking. So you obviously are not for. I voted all of for a moratorium. So you're, you're, I was voted for a moratorium so they could be responsible. You, you voted against increased energy production in the state assembly. Well, let's not let's, true. let's focus on Congress. Mm -hmm. It's clear that big oil is a dramatic part of the problem here. They're jacking up prices for the benefit of their own profit, and they are against drilling more in many instances because that's exactly what Wall Street wants them to do. It's one of the reasons why I'm not taking corporate PAC or federal lobbyist money in this race or any other, because we can't be on their side. We have to be on the side of so the American consumer. We have consumer. to take a break, but I'm going to give you a yeah, few I'll seconds. Yeah, I'll just say that it seems like he wants, to, he wants to find more socialist solutions, not innovation and American free market solutions. And the companies were investigated for price gouging, and it was found that it was not taking place. The people who are price gouging Americans are the very Democrats who are in office it, right now. It's key. We've got to take a break. It's time for a break, and we'll be right back with more. We've got a lot more to say.